only about 0.12 to 0.16 inches thick, a frying pan must endure thousands of repeated heating cycles on the stove while its surface continues to perform reliably for many years of use. Yet creating that seemingly simple smooth surface is the result of a complex industrial journey that stretches across multiple production shifts. It begins with forming the pan's basic shape, passes through precision mechanical machining and rigorous surface treatment processes, and ends with quality control and packaging, where even the smallest deviation can affect the pan's overall performance. In this video, the factor in takes you through that entire journey, revealing what truly lies behind the familiar frying pan we place on our stove every single day. A non-stick pan is just a familiar kitchen tool, but behind it lies a massive global industrial system valued at an estimated 10 billion USD, concentrated in major manufacturing hubs such as China, Germany, and Italy. Every day, factories ship out around 30,000 pans, ready to leave the production floor and merge into the flow of global commerce. Its true power comes from the coating, whose smoothness is often compared to melting ice. Allowing cooking with minimal oil while preserving the natural texture of food, what makes it exceptional is the coating process itself, controlled with precision down to the micrometer, ensuring long-lasting heat resistance and durability. With millions of products circulating worldwide each year, the non-stick pan is not just a cooking utensil, but a symbol of modern technology and the scale of global trade. The journey of a non-stick pan usually begins with raw aluminum ingots arriving at the factory. Even though today's market offers many different types of cookware, such as stainless steel, cast iron, carbon steel, or ceramic-coated pans, aluminum pans still dominate global production. According to cookware industry statistics, aluminum accounts for about 70-80% of all non-stick pans manufactured each year. The reasons are straightforward. Aluminum is lightweight, conducts heat quickly, distributes heat evenly, is easy to shape, cost-effective, and most importantly, it provides an ideal base for modern non-stick coatings. Before melting, the aluminum is tested for purity and alloy composition. Once the furnace is in operation, the aluminum is melted into a uniform liquid metal. Small amounts of other metals, such as silicon or magnesium, may be added to improve hardness, structural strength, and mechanical durability. Impurities and oxides rise to the surface and are carefully removed, ensuring that only clean, high-quality metal is used. The quality of this stage directly determines the microscopic structure of the pan body. If the metal is not sufficiently pure, the surface will be harder to refine later, and the adhesion of the non-stick coating will be less stable and less durable. Once the aluminum reaches a fully uniform molten state, the metal is guided out of the furnace and poured into the forming molds. These molds are made from high heat resistant steel and are preheated so the aluminum can spread evenly without thermal shock. The pouring flow is tightly controlled to prevent air bubbles, metal voids, or microscopic cracks because even the smallest deviation can weaken the pan body and reduce its heat transfer efficiency. At this point, the pan body is still only a rough, thick, and unfinished aluminum blank. The surface remains coarse, the edges are uneven, and the thickness is not yet uniform since factories intentionally cast extra material to allow for later machining. However, the precision of the casting stage already determines almost the entire mechanical quality of the pan, from its hardness and flatness to its long-term structural stability during everyday use. In some factories, the process does not begin with melting aluminum and pouring it into casting molds. Instead, they use pre-made aluminum blanks in the form of flat round discs, commonly called aluminum discs. These blanks have already been rolled and roughly shaped in advance with stable thickness and controlled alloy composition. The aluminum discs are then fed directly into hydraulic stamping presses. Under extremely high pressure, the metal is forced and stretched along the shape of the die, gradually forming the body of the pan. This method allows for much faster production, more uniform wall thickness, and fewer internal defects compared to traditional casting, which is why it has become widely used in modern non-stick pan manufacturing lines. 
After the stamping process, the pan body still goes through grinding and reshaping operations. These steps flatten the base, refine the rim, and further improve surface uniformity, preparing the pan for the precision finishing. Stages that follow. Once the pan body has taken its final shape, the forming process continues with the bottom flattening stage, where the surface that contacts the heat source is calibrated with high precision. The pan is placed into a hydraulic press, and its base, already carrying a technical texture or pattern, is compressed between two flat steel dies under enormous pressure. This force drives the metal to redistribute evenly, bringing the entire bottom into a perfectly flat state and eliminating the small distortions created during the body forming process. At the same time, it helps relieve internal stress within the metal, making the base more stable as it repeatedly expands and contracts during cooking. At this step, the bottom thickness is also clearly standardized. It is typically made 20 to 40% thicker than the side walls to improve heat retention, ensure more even heat distribution, and reduce the risk of warping over time. A pan with a properly pressed base will sit firmly on the stove without rocking or wobbling and will maintain consistent cooking performance in long-term use. In some factories, after the base is pressed, the pan is further processed on CNC machines for final refinement. The CNC operation removes only an extremely thin layer of metal, just enough to enhance flatness and balance. This step is usually reserved for premium grade pans, where geometric tolerances are controlled to exceptionally tight limits. After the base of the pan has been pressed and its geometry fully refined, each unit is placed onto a conveyor and moved to the bottom coating line. This is the natural transition from mechanical forming to surface protection. At this stage, a heat-resistant coating is evenly sprayed over the entire bottom, creating a thin yet durable protective layer that seals the metal surface. This coating prevents oxidation, reduces corrosion, and keeps the pan's base stable under high operating temperatures. As a result, it extends the product's lifespan and preserves consistent heat transfer performance throughout years of daily use. After the base is completed, the pan moves to the internal primer coating line where a foundation layer is applied inside the cooking surface. This is a specialized technical primer that exists only on the area in contact with food and serves as the bonding bridge between the aluminum body and the non-stick coating layers that will follow. It does not create slipperiness by itself, but it directly determines the adhesion and strength and long-term durability of the entire coating system. If this base layer is unstable, even the most advanced non-stick coating will degrade quickly. The primer is sprayed extremely thin and with exceptional uniformity inside a sealed chamber with thickness measured in micrometers. It must cover the entire interior surface evenly without bare spots or localized buildup. If it is too thin, the non-stick layer can peel off easily. If it is too thick, micro cracks may form when exposed to high temperatures. More importantly, this coating must meet strict food safety standards. It must contain no heavy metals, release no toxic substances when heated, and remain chemically stable throughout cooking. It can be considered the invisible foundation of a non-stick pan, ensuring both the technical durability of the coating and the safety of every surface that comes into contact with food. Immediately after the primer is sprayed, the pan is transferred into a drying chamber to set and stabilize the initial coating. At this stage, the temperature is carefully controlled, just high enough to fully evaporate the solvents in the paint, allowing the primer to bond firmly to the aluminum surface without altering its chemical structure. If the drying is too fast, the coating can cure unevenly and develop micro cracks. If it is too slow, the surface becomes unstable and compromises the adhesion of the layers that follow. This step acts as the stabilization phase of the primer, preparing a solid and reliable foundation for the non-stick coating system that will be applied on top. From the drying chamber, the pan moves to the non-stick coating line. This coating system is built from several ultra-thin layers, each serving a specific technical function. An adhesion layer to bond with the primer, a reinforcement layer to increase mechanical durability, and a top layer that creates the food release, 
non-stick surface. Dividing the coating into multiple layers makes the entire system far more stable than applying a single thick layer. The spraying process takes place inside a sealed chamber where flow rate, pressure, and spray angle are precisely controlled to ensure uniform thickness across the entire interior of the pan. The total thickness of the non-stick system is usually only a few dozen micrometers, yet the allowable tolerance is extremely small. If the coating is uneven or too thin, its non-stick performance will degrade quickly. If it is too thick, the coating becomes more prone to cracking or peeling under high temperatures and repeated thermal shock. The non-stick materials used at this stage must meet strict food safety standards. They must be free of heavy metals, non-reactive with food, and chemically stable when exposed to cooking temperatures. This is the stage that directly determines the pan's durability, safety, and real-world service life. After the non-stick layers are applied, the pan is transferred into a curing oven to permanently set the entire coating system. Here, high temperatures cause the layers to polymerize and bond tightly with one another, transforming them from simple surface coatings into a solid film that is chemically and mechanically stable. This stage determines the true durability of the non-stick surface. If the curing temperature is too low or the time is too short, the coating will not fully bond and can peel easily. If the temperature is too high or the exposure is too long, the surface can become brittle and its service life will be reduced. For that reason, both time and temperature are strictly controlled to ensure the non-stick coating reaches its optimal stability, safety, and long-term performance in real cooking conditions. After the inner non-stick coating has been fully cured, the pan is transferred to the stage where the outer body is coated. The exterior surface is sprayed with a heat-resistant paint or a specialized protective coating designed to prevent an oxidation, reduce corrosion, and shield the aluminum from moisture, grease, and cleaning chemicals during everyday use. This outer coating never comes into contact with food, yet it plays a crucial role in determining the pan's visual durability and mechanical lifespan. It keeps the exterior from discoloring, prevents peeling under high temperatures, and helps the pan body remain stable through thousands of heating and cooling cycles over its service life. Once the protective paint has been applied, the pan is sent into a drying chamber to cure and set this outer layer. The drying temperature is carefully controlled, high enough to fully evaporate the solvents in the paint, but not so high that it damages the coating. This allows the paint to bond firmly to the aluminum and form a stable protective film. This drying step ensures that the exterior coating does not run, discolor, or peel when exposed to high cooking temperatures. At the same time, it gives the pan the mechanical strength and long-lasting appearance it needs before moving on to the final assembly and finishing stages. Once the outer coating has been fully cured, the pan moves to the handle mounting stage, where it truly becomes a complete cooking tool. The handle is precisely aligned with the engineered holes on the pan body, then secured using heat-resistant rivets or bolts, creating a direct mechanical connection with the metal structure. The rivets are typically made from stainless steel or high-temperature alloys so they do not expand excessively or weaken over time. The pressing and tightening forces are carefully calculated, strong enough to prevent the handle from loosening during use, yet gentle enough to avoid deforming the pan body or damaging the inner coating. Beyond strength, the handle is also designed with thermal insulation or a hollow internal structure to reduce heat transfer from the pan body to the grip. This allows the user to handle the pan safely and comfortably, even when it is operating at high temperatures. After the handle is fully installed, the pan moves to the packaging stage. First, each unit undergoes a final inspection to ensure the non-stick coating is free of scratches, the exterior paint shows no color defects, and the handle is firmly secured. Approved pans are lightly cleaned, then wrapped in protective materials such as plastic film, anti-scratch paper, or thin foam to prevent surface damage during transportation. Next, the pan is placed into a custom-designed carton that matches its size, minimizing impact and vibration. Inside the box, paper molds or cushioning inserts are often added to keep the pan firmly in position. The packaging displays all essential information, including the brand, materials, 
usage instructions, safety warnings, and guidelines for maintaining the nonstick coating. Packaging is not just about protecting the product. It is the final stage that completes the pan's identity before it enters the distribution system. A well-designed packaging process preserves technical quality, maintains visual appeal, and creates a professional first impression the moment the user opens the box. From raw aluminum ingots to a finished pan, this is a journey made up of many tightly connected stages. Body forming, base pressing, surface treatment, painting, non-stick coating, thermal curing, handle assembly, and packaging. Every single step is strictly controlled because even the smallest deviation can affect the pan's durability, safety, and cooking performance. The pan you hold in your hands is not just a kitchen tool, it is the result of a highly disciplined and precisely engineered industrial process. And if you want to keep discovering the hidden journeys behind everyday objects, follow the factor in so you don't miss the stories that come next.